Okay, good morning, boys and girls. Uh, welcome to yet another uh, lesson for today. Today we're going to look at um, a structure, and uh, this structure will be based on uh, transformations, okay, or rewrites. So when you talk about uh, transformations, this is um, a type of structure in which we are supposed to rewrite a particular sentence in a different way. The sentence is given and then you are given a, a question in which you are required to transform it or meaning to rewrite it, to say it in another way but without change of meaning. Now, when you look at these transformations, we are going to look at um, the ones that are based on um, uh, the, 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 what we, which are caused on, uh, which are based on the, what we call um, a contrast, transformations that express contrast. Then, before we look at those, the first thing that we must look at is that uh, we need to understand what we need to know when we are trying to rewrite our uh, uh, sentences. Now, the first thing that we must look at for that are the, the tenses. First of all, we like we write um, transformations. Okay, transformations as our main topic. Okay, so under transformations, we need to consider the following. Okay, consider the following. The first thing that we must look at before we can actually do any transformations or when we can, before we can write any sentence is to look at, for example, read the sentence. Okay, read. The sentence carefully, okay? Read the sentence carefully. And once you have read the sentence, it means that you need to ensure that you understand the sentence. Because what we require is to understand the meaning of that particular sentence that we are given. And then once we understand the meaning, then it will become easy for us to rewrite it in another form that we are required to. Apart from reading the sentence, ensure that you also look at or identify the tense. Identify the tense in which the sentence is written. We know we have different types of tenses. We have the present tense, the past tense, perfect tenses, participle tenses, and so on. So all those must be taken into consideration. So that when we are writing that sentence, we should not transform it into another tense unless we are asked to do so. For example, in the situation where you are given the, the sentence which is in reported speech and then you are required to write that sentence in direct speech. There you would consider the tense transformation. But in certain sentences, we need to ensure that we maintain the type of tense that we have been asked to. Now, so you must consider the tense, okay, because the tense will give us a guide when, for example, that particular sentence was said. Was it said last year? Was it said last week? Was it said this morning? Has it just been said now? Or will it be said in future? So we need to look at those. After that, looking at the sentence, we need also to look at the content, the type of words, for example, that are in that word, the rather in that sentence. Because we have, I think, two key type of words. We have what we call content words and function words. Okay? Now, what are content words? Content words are words that actually express meaning. They carry meaning even on their own. 
okay whereas function words they help us to make a sentence grammatically correct i'll give you an example for example when you talk about um, uh, content words okay when you look at the content words we said that these are words that have meaning on their own for example i'll say as an example i'll say for example cut if i'm using the word cut and if there's something that you have nearby say for example you have a knife next to you and then there's a piece of uh, bread next to you and then i come and say cut automatically you may carry or pick up the knife and then he carry, I'd rather cut the, the piece of bread where you have been, which is laid on the table. But when you talk about a, a, a word such as is, okay, when you look at the word is, the word is is simply a function word. It is a verb, yes. But it is a verb that functions either as a connector to the content words. Okay? Now, we are saying that when we look at the word cut, when you are told cut, automatically you will be able to understand to say probably I need to use a knife, an axe or something like that to do what? To cut something. But if I just come and say is, what meaning has it got? It will not actually it makes sense to you because it doesn't have a, a meaning that actually is able to make you probably perform an action. You just say is, then so what about is? But when you say cut or when you say it, and if there is food next to you, automatically it will not need you to say no, probably it should be in a sentence where I'll be required to say no, uh, can you eat now? or can you run if i say run you automatically perform the action of running because run itself is a content word okay so now when we are talking about the transformations we should consider content words as well as the function words function words i've given you an example of the word is now so after that okay we talked about function words. So we have that function word, okay? In an example of who is. Then apart from that, we must now ensure that we understand the meaning. Okay? Understand the meaning of the word. Of the sentence rather. Understand the meaning. of the word or the sentence okay so these are important uh, things that we need to, to to take into consideration when we are rewriting sentences or when we are doing transformations so we are saying that we need one we need to consider the sentence by reading the sentence so that we get the, the meaning of it and after we have read the sentence, then we must say, consider the tense. In what tense is this particular sentence written? Is it in the past tense? So that when we are rewriting it, are we being asked to rewrite this sentence in another tense? So it is through understanding the sentence after we have read it. Then after that, we need to look at the content words. Which word? If we substitute it, is going to change the meaning of the original sentence. So we must ensure that we make sure this sentence does not actually change from what it is originally to something else. Because sometimes if you eliminate what we call content words, the words that actually carry the actual meaning of that particular sentence at that particular time, you replace it with another word. It means that uh, the original meaning of that particular sentence is going to be transformed or changed to something else. 
and thereby it will actually lose meaning. So we must maintain certain types of words that are called content words, which carry meaning, which when we substitute those words with something else or with a different word, then it will actually cause the loss of the original meaning of that particular sentence. Then, after that, we must see, we know that uh, uh, function words can actually either be, uh, not be replaced, or they can actually be transformed, but uh, the meaning will not actually affect the sentence. Then, uh, after that, we must ensure that we understand the sentence. So, once we have considered these, okay, parts of uh, the understanding of the sentence, the reading of the sentence to get the gist, and then also the tense aspect, and then you have the content words, words that actually have a full meaning of that particular, uh, in that particular sentence. Then if we have function words, and then we can now transform the particular sentence into that which it is required. So now, what we are going to look at under these transformations, we are also going to look at uh, a specific topic which is in words or structures that express contrast. Okay? Structures that express contrast. So now, what are those structures that express contrast? Okay? One of the, them, I think that some of them that I can actually include, we have uh, the structures that stru uh, express contrast. Okay. So what, first of all, is contrast? Okay. We must understand what to contrast means. A contrast is something which we, is described as the opposite of something that occurred. Okay. So now, in a, Transformations, we have structures that are commonly used, especially during examinations, which actually you are uh, supposed to use to express the opposite of the other. For example, we have such words as in spite of. So we can see the examples. Okay. That examples of words that express contrast, we have in spite of. Remember that this word, okay, is not used as one word, okay? In is separate, spite and of, okay? So, in spite of is one structure that expresses contrast. Then, apart from that, we have besides. Okay, we have besides, is one other structure that expresses contrast. Then we have also despite. Okay, we have despite. Apart from that, we have instead of. Okay, apart from instead of, we have at the same time. Okay. We have at the same time, then we have also nonetheless. Okay. Then apart from nonetheless, we have however. Okay. Apart from however, we have on the other hand. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we have um, structures such as in spite of, besides, despite, instead of, at the same time. Then we have nonetheless, however, and on the other hand. 
So these are structures that are commonly used in transformations in the real rights and they are almost coming each and every year. So all we need to do is we are trying to understand what this contrast is. To contrast simply means to show the opposite of this one. For example, I'll give you an, a, a sentence such as, in spite of the rain, okay, in spite of the rain, we went out to play football. In spite of the rain, we went out to play football. Now, look, there are two things. Because in most instances, we find that probably when it is raining, we don't expect it to go out. Because probably we are scared of uh, the rain. But uh, instead, we did the opposite. When we are supposed to be under shelter, we decided to go and play football in the, in the rain. So, it means that two things, okay, two opposite things have happened, okay? The rain, okay, and also playing football. Instead of us actually maybe staying away, but we decided to go against the other. So, you have that kind of a sentence expressing what we call contrast. So, among the many other types of structures which express contrast, include also besides, okay? All right. Now, sometimes we use besides, uh, probably for commonality, you find that uh, many people actually say besides of. It's not besides of, but besides, okay? It doesn't carry any preposition when you are expressing this, okay? Besides his being rich, he is also poor on the other hand, okay? Then we have also despite, okay? Despite the heat, we went out. Despite the heat, we went out. Or despite the coronavirus pandemic, we went shopping. So you can see, there are two things, the coronavirus as well as shopping. Because you need this other one, but you have got the other challenge on the other hand. So we have those. Then you have got instead of, then at the same time, then nonetheless, however, and on the other hand. So these structures express contrast. Now, if you have gotten an idea of the expressions of contrast, then it is at this particular time that I will need you to write the following sentences and ensure that you use the structures that express contrast, which I have listed here, okay, among them, to write the sentences which I'm going to give you as an exercise. Thereafter, I'll check your work and see whether you would have done the correct thing at that particular time. Thank you very much.